Okay, so I decided I'd try to make a little video to show people um, how I tie rat lines on my model ships uh, using the clove hitch knot. I know when I first started doing it, I was kind of worried and I didn't really understand how a clove hitch worked or a lot of knots. And um, turns out it's pretty easy, so for anybody who's having trouble with it, maybe they'll find this video and it'll help things uh, be simplified a little bit. Um, first, let me show you the tools that I'm going to start with. Um, I got my little piece of paper behind my shrouds here just so you can kind of see a little bit better with the lighting and it's going to be tricky because I've got the the camera right in front of me so I'll be working around it and it's hopefully you'll be able to see okay anyway I got a pair of scissors my Fiskars micro tips they're uh, pretty handy they get they cut pretty close uh, got your regular old pair of metal tweezers and then uh, one of my favorite tools is this it's a little it's about six inches in length um, a needle that I got at the sewing shop and I think it's made for like sewing doll parts or something but had a really big eye on the end, so I took my Dremel and kind of just cut a notch out of it. And I can use it as a hook to reach in behind the shrouds, twist it, and pull my thread around while I'm doing clove hitches. Um, down low, it's okay to use tweezers, but as you start to get higher up, uh, the shrouds, you know, they get closer together, and pretty soon you won't be able to uh, really get behind it with the tweezers to pull your thread back through. And that's when this thing kind of comes in handy. And usually, I mean, now I just use it for most all of them because I can just get in there quicker and, and move myself around. So. But I will start out and do one with a regular tweezer just to kind of show you guys um, how it goes and hopefully not knock my phone over. So the first thing I do is I tie an overhand knot on the first shroud that I'm going to do the rat line around. And I got my wax thread here and I grab it, give it a little kink so it's got kind of an L and put that corner from around the back, pull enough through to make a little overhand knot. And this first overhand knot I cinch it down pretty tight because I don't want to have to deal with it coming loose later. Um, get it down there and then uh, I'm going about a centimeter this is a 100 scale and I'm doing about a centimeter in between my rat lines um, that's probably a little bit higher than it needs to be but um, it works for me I like the way it looks and uh, basically we're gonna go straight across it'll look somewhat like that I like to leave a little bit of sag in them but uh, anyway so starts out with your first overhand knot and then you take the other end of your line I usually cut about 12 to 15 inches at a time. That gives me enough that I can play, you know, two or three across. Um, you always want to have at least enough thread to where the length is twice as wide or hopefully a little more as the rat lines you're going to do. You'll end up needing that extra. So once you get down to only having just enough to go across your shrouds, it's not going to be enough. So thread's cheap. Uh, just, you know, if you don't have enough, get a new piece. Anyway, so the first time with your first time you start, you got your overhand knot on your leftmost shroud, and then you're going to take the other end of your line and run it around the front of your next shroud over, and then reach in there with your tweezers or your hook and pull it around and under. So you can kind of see it go pop, and that's it. Now I'm, I went around the front and down and behind it. Now I'm sticking back out. You see, and then you're going to continue around it again around the front of the shroud just like before only this time you're going to go over the rat line you just made across it and then you're going to go under the loop that you're going to create by that last time you went around that may sound confusing but you'll see it just goes around and then back under the trailing end of that loop you just made and you'll see it tighten up as I pull it down you can kind of see that's how it starts to look you can trace it around under around over and then through the loop and then slowly draw it up and I use the tweezers to kind of as this clove hitch starts to cinch up, you can adjust where it's going to grab so you can try to keep it more or less level. Now, I don't tighten them too much, and then at the end when I get all the way through, I'll make sure everybody's level. But right now, you just kind of bring it in your general area. Use the tweezers to hold the shroud steady and just give it a little, little bit of a grab. Now, that one was way out of line, too high, so I'll grab the tweezers and kind of just tug it down. So that's more like it. So there's the first one. Pretty easy. And then uh, I'll do a couple more just to kind of keep things in rolling. But I am going to switch back to my little hook because for me it's, it's a lot faster and I'm better with it now. So again, you start out around the front to the back and you reach in with your hook or your tweezers and grab it and pull the thread through. And you're around to the back and down. And then you go around again, around the front of it. Only this time you're going straight back through underneath the rest of the loop. And as you pull it down, it creates a clove hitch. And then as that starts to cinch up, use your hook or your tweezers just to kind of hold the shroud steady so you don't tug on it too much. And there, give it a little cinch. I don't generally 
cinch down my clove hitches for my rat lines very tight. They, they tend to kink. They put so much pressure on the shrouds they can kink them. And as you get closer to the top, it can actually kind of change the direction. And it looks a little bit like it's not in a straight line anymore. So I just make them a little bit. Just when it starts to grab, that's when I call it good enough. So and I'll just run a few through them. Run through a few of them real quick here, just to kind of show you. It's it's kind of tedious when you get to the rat line stage, but it looks so much better than um, like an injection molded shroud and rat line assembly. And um, I don't really know about the plastic covered string that comes in some of the Revell kits and stuff. I know some people use them with good results, but I've never really tried them still pretty new. This is only my second ship of doing rat lines and so that's why it occurred to me that people might like to see a video because I couldn't find one um, that was really it would explain it clearly and this maybe will help some people out but they go pretty quickly and you know you, it, there's a lot of them to do I didn't do the math for how many knots it really is but this this channel has 10 shrouds across and so that's you know 10 clove hitch knots across and I don't know how high it has to go I mean all the way it ends up being hundreds and the many hundreds of knots by the time you get the whole ship done but you just do a few at a time I'll come come up here after dinner you know spend 20 minutes turn on some music and you know get a few across I could probably do this 10 in like five minutes or so especially if I w was didn't have to work around the camera and if I wasn't talking about just in there listening to music and rolling through it I can do it pretty quick, so I can come up here in half an hour and run, you know, six or seven rows across, and, um, you know, pretty soon after several nights of a little bit of time here and there, you'll be ready to move on to your next step, and I'll actually be done with this ship soon. Once the rat lines are on, I have to tie on the anchors and, uh, like, some of the braces on the outside of the yards, but most of the running rigging's already ready. I kind of wish I had waited to do the, um attach the yards after I did the rat lines because as I get closer to the yards it gets to be a little bit in the way something I learned this time that I'll wait so the next time I'll know sometimes you don't get enough through hope everybody can see this I don't want to have to record the video again I actually already started I tried to record this once for that second row behind underneath and then I realized I didn't hit the record button so that was fun. I'm doing it for the second take two for us. Um, so as you can see, now I'm coming up on the last one. Looks like the video has been going almost about eight minutes, um, which isn't real fast, but considering that I'm, like I said, working around a camera and talking and trying to explain things, um, it's about, it's a little bit slower than I normally might do it. And then the last one's, clove hitch give it a good cinch and like I said the front the first and the last one I like to really tighten them up because you don't want these ones to come loose but and there you go pretty much straight that one I'll probably straighten now when I get them all on I'll put some AC along every knot cut off the string and make sure everybody's straightened out and level all the way across but there you go rat lines didn't take that long